So iPhone 11 has been out for a little over a week now. I've had mine since launched and I've been using and testing it since then. And for today, I wanted to see how it, the now affordable iPhone 11 going for $699, stacks up to the last gen 10R, which is still being sold for $599. So whether you have the 10R currently and are maybe looking to upgrade or you're choosing between these two devices, stick around to see how they compare. But before we continue here, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, as the algorithm likes that, and will help push my content to more people. So without further ado, let's see how the brand new iPhone 11 compares to its predecessor, the iPhone XR. So beginning with design, aesthetically both these phones are very similar with a couple key distinctions. Uh, number one, as you can see here, the Apple logo has been shifted towards the middle. With the iPhone 11, we also no longer have the iPhone branding on the back here. With the front glass, obviously things are looking similar and dimensionally these phones are identical. But as you know, we do have new colors with the iPhone 11. We now have a green color, which looks like teal as I have here. It also comes in a yellow and purple model alongside the typical black, white, and red or product red colors. And then with the 10R, some just distinctive colors were and are the blue and the coral. Another design difference lies with the type of glass on the back. While both are glossy, you do get some matte glass surrounding the new dual camera setup here, so that is a nice design element, I think. But in terms of feel in the hand, you know, basically identical. Once again, size, weight, dimensions, all the same. Both are very premium, despite the fact that they don't feature stainless steel like uh, there is in the 11 Pro Max and the previous gen iPhone XS and XS Max. So in terms of speaker quality, um, the iPhone 11 now supports spatial audio playback in Dolby Atmos. Uh, to put it in layman's terms, it is substantially louder from what I can tell, and there is more detail with the sound, but obviously both have decent sound setups. I don't know if it's worth $100 to you, but it is substantially better, I will say, you know, no noticeably so, so if audio playback is important to you, whether you're watching movies or listening to music, then the iPhone 11 might be the phone to get. Another key distinction is the IP rating. iPhone XR has an IP67 rating, which means it can go underwater uh, up to one meter for 30 minutes, whereas the iPhone 11 can endure two meters for up to 30 minutes. But yeah, to wrap things up with design here, I mean, in terms of the feel in the hand, they're pretty much identical, if not identical. The only real differences, again, are with the IP rating, the sound quality, and some of the colors. Moving on to display here, uh, really nothing has changed between these two devices here. They both sport 6.1 inch liquid retina HD LCD panels with 625 nits of peak brightness. Um, both have IPS technology, both have true tone, P3 color, and haptic touch. And in my experience, you know, they're both great for consuming media and doing your everyday stuff. Literally nothing different here, nothing that I can even discern. And there is no specification difference listed on Apple's website. In other words, between these two devices, there is no reason to buy one over the other to get a better display. They are literally, once again, identical. Moving on to battery life, I have not done enough testing myself to give you a completely accurate answer, but Apple rates the iPhone 11 to get an extra one hour of battery life overall. In comparison to the iPhone XR here, it also has about, you know, one to 200 more milliamp hours within this device. But after watching a really excellent battery test, which put both these devices to a really, you know, rigorous and realistic test, um, it may appear that the iPhone XR may get a bit better battery life. Both the A12 and the A13 are pretty much equal in efficiency with both these devices. Um, um, and the iPhone 11 does not get the same battery treatment as the iPhone 11 Pro and the 11 Pro Max get, which do have substantially more battery life over their predecessors, the XS and the XS Max. Unlike with the higher end models, there's no reason to upgrade or to buy one phone over the other for the sake of battery life. Moving on to camera here, like it's bigger, badder, and more expensive brethren, camera this year is the biggest distinction between the iPhone 11 and its predecessor. Um, we now have an additional 12 megapixel rear sensor with an ultra wide lens, and it's really useful. I love using it. You can get so much more into a shot, whether you're in a tight space or you're wanting to cram more of a landscape in. Night mode is also a new feature that has been introduced with iPhone 11 alongside the 11 Pro and Pro Max, and it makes a night and day difference. <laughs> and referring back to the dual lens setup here, bokeh or the portrait mode does not require a face to work with the iPhone 11. So you can apply the effect to pretty much anything you want from, you know, inanimate objects to pets and obviously two faces like you could with the 10R. The front camera with the iPhone 11 is also improved. It now has a higher resolution, 12 megapixels versus last year's seven. It also has a wider field of view, which you can toggle to get more people into your shots. You can also record up to 4K video with the front facing camera now, as well as do, you know, slow fees or slow motion video. And overall, I gotta say, comparing image quality here, um, the iPhone 11's images, you know, video and photo look noticeably sharper. They have higher contrast, higher dynamic range. And if my eyes aren't lying, the video stabilization does appear to be a little bit better as well. 
And last but not least, let's talk performance with both these devices here. Um, obviously, with the generational jump from A12 to A13, we can expect to see some jump in performance, especially in the multi-core scores here. But as you can see, with single-core performance, it's not that big of a difference. And in everyday tasks, you shouldn't notice too much of a jump or an advantage with the iPhone 11 over the iPhone XR here. Apps, as you can imagine, tend to open just a tad bit quicker with the iPhone XR, but in most cases, you're not going to notice any real discernible difference. Once again, in everyday performance, doing day-to-day -day tasks like texting, opening apps once again. But it is worth mentioning that the iPhone 11 does have an additional gig of RAM, which will, you know, increase performance in regard to maybe some gaming, but especially app switching. You know, you, you can definitely keep a couple more apps running in the background without needing to refresh. But beyond everyday tasks, which are, you know, more single core oriented, there is a significant boost in multi-core scores here by 868 points to be precise. So you are definitely going to see better results, you know, in regard to video editing and some heavy gaming. So if you are a power user, this may be the reason to upgrade to this phone or to buy this phone over the iPhone XR. This is going to do some more heavy lifting and a better job at that than its predecessor. Uh, once again, with the increase in multi-core scores, as we can see here. And last up, Face ID has been enhanced with the iPhone 11, meaning it's a bit more accurate and you can get into your phone just a bit quicker in comparison to its predecessor 10R and 10S. So what is my takeaway here? Should you upgrade from the 10R to the iPhone 11? Um, the answer is no, in my opinion, unless you absolutely adore the ultra wide camera setup and the enhanced camera performance, um, the specs, the design, the display, battery, and overall everyday performance at least um, between these two devices are not that much different and would not justify getting an upgrade. Should you upgrade from the iPhone 7 or the iPhone 8 or an earlier iPhone? Um, I think so. The full screen display, which was introduced with the iPhone 10, is a really nice experience alongside the navigational gestures, so it makes the phone a whole new experience. And battery life, camera performance, and just performance in general are going to be better too, you know, because the A13 is quite the boost from the A10 and the A11 processors. And the final question, I guess, is should you buy the 11 over the 10R as both are being sold on the marketplace currently by Apple? Um, and once again, like I said about, you know, should you upgrade if you really care about the camera performance, which is, you know, substantially better. If you want, you know, better multi-core performance, you know, for multi-core oriented tasks like gaming and video editing, and you like the new colors and you want the clout, I don't know, buy the iPhone 11. It's only $100 more and it won't make that much of a difference in terms of what you're paying monthly. If you're doing an installment, it might be like, you know, a couple extra dollars a month. But I mean, if those features that I just mentioned aren't worth it to you, Go with the 10R, you will be perfectly happy, and you'll have money left over to invest in Apple Care, a case, a screen protector, you know, other things besides, you know, the features that you would pay for with the iPhone 11. And that about wraps things up here. Once again, I'd really appreciate it if you leave a like on this video, comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or opinions, and subscribe for more content like this. Await some more iPhone 11 content, particularly iPhone 11 Pro Max content. I will be comparing that to the 10S Max, my previous daily driver, and I have iPad 10.2 content coming as well. And as always, I'm Noah, and I will catch you all in the next one.